So we did some huge progress last year. Matthew put down the table of contents. And I've added like half a chapter. And that's pretty much all we have. Uh, uh, so, uh, ideas? Anybody? John? Ideas. Um, you guys should all write some more stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you I, very much. <laughs> I mean, what, what we're seeing, of course, is the problem that we see across the entire kernel. We have thousands of people paid to work on the kernel. We have zero people paid to work on documentation. And, okay. and we see the results of that. And I don't know what to do other than to complain to our employers and uh, try to get well. some resources attached to that. I'm sure that's an easy thing to do. It isn't as easy to do. I, I can start pointing to people, hey, you have to do this and that, but it won't work anyway. <laughs> I, I have to say, what I found is at various different companies, not just my current employer, when, when, when you talk to management and say, hey, we need documentation, people are like, yeah, but I can only get funding to hire engineers. I can't get funding to hire documentation people. So there's, there, there's some corporate brokenness that seems endemic to our industry. Um, you're an engineering manager, you're not a documentation manager. It's like, uh, how do we ever produce documentation for other products? Oh, one thing I think, could be possible, and something I, I've been trying to enforce a little bit is you don't accept patches unless it's documented. That's a requirement. And then, then you might get employers to fund it. But we have a huge debt. Well, I know, but then, then what you could do is actually you could kind of like say, okay, we'll take this patch if you document that. <laughs> <laughs> We, so <laughs> we should have taken Maple Tree after Liam would, would document the, the chapter of right. the process memory. Yeah, exactly. That, that's good, yeah. That's how the Futex people got the Futex 2 working. Because someone said, like, can you modify Futex? I said, no, you have to rewrite a whole new Futex infrastructure to get this feature in. So the, the problem is uh, not every engineer is a good writer. <laughs> well, I kind of volunteered to help with that. <laughs> well, yes, accurate. but uh, the, the second uh, comment I want to make is that, uh, like, it, it, yes, it looks like it's uh, endemic to our field, so maybe we should have, um, like, m maybe this is like a, 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 a like good projects uh, for outreach or something to add documentation to MM. Uh, it will be really tough for outreach, you know, uh, to understand what you're writing about. I don't know, Lorenzo, how much did it take you to start the book? It doesn't have to be everywhere. It can, can be oh, but following Steve's suggestions, I think we can't remove slab before the stimul documents loop. <laughs> as, as, as someone who contributed to Google Summer of Code, which is very close to outreach as far as I know, and I, I think it's not ideal at all to have people uh, through outreach or Google Summer of Code or even interns do that work. When I, when I, when I was an intern at Google, I, I, if someone told me, hey, you're going to work for three months and documenting some things no one wanted to document, that would be... You wouldn't be, buy it. Yeah, that would be a very poor internship experience. I don't think we should delegate this to... to, to no. And, and unfortunately... Uh, outreach is not exactly an internship. And it, it is internship. It's pretty much like Google well, Summer of Code, yes. It, it's not exactly because uh, people can be from... Uh, different backgrounds, like they don't have to be uh, like specialized. But, but in actually, I mentored several projects in outreach. They come with a fresh graduate level of expertise. So if you ask them to document, let's say, how process manages its memory, mm -hmm. it will take them like three outreach rounds to get there. So, so the, the question is, how do we solve this endemic problem in our field? How can we find That's what I'm asking the audience. Who, right? How can we find people who are good at documenting? Well, and Matthew is good at documenting. <laughs> John. Well, I, I, actually, I wanted to point out to our esteemed scribe that uh, we had, a, we had a, an offer last plumbers from someone who was actually a, a, a professional documenter, and then we just never followed up. We completely dropped the ball on that. 
I don't remember that, but... Yeah, it was a, it was a plumber's. We had a documentation session, and uh, a, a lady called in who I happen to know personally, and, and we've, we've, we've pinged a couple of times, and, and we've just never got around to having the kickoff <laughs> meeting. So I, I, this, is, this part of it is on us, but I'll, I'll, I, will, I, will, I will resend the ping, John, <laughs> and, and, and may, maybe this, this time we'll actually have the kickoff meeting. Yeah, I have actually talked to the person involved a couple of times, and it never seems to really go very far. But another try is is worth doing. But um, you know, in terms of finding people somewhere, if you can find good writers, you can write about this stuff. They're not going to do mermaid management documentation because I'll hire them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's hard. It's really hard to find people who can do this well. But you know, it's hard to find good engineers, and we work to bring them up to speed over time. I think we should be able to do the same yeah, with writers. Yeah, you're saying the outreach. You so um, my yeah. point is that uh, with outreach, people choose what they want to work on. It's not like uh, they join and then they are given a project. They pick a project out of a list of projects. And if there is someone comes who wants to write a documentation, who feels that uh, they actually can help, wh why ignore them? Well, I can propose MM documentation as outreach project next year. We'll see if there will be any buyers. And can you please give I can see there's something called Google Season of Docs, which says Google Season of Docs provides support for open source projects to improve their documentation and gives professional technical writers an opportunity to, that's, that's where it ends. But, uh, John, did we participate in that sometime? So prob probably it could work, yes. It's called Google Season of Docs, and it's exactly what, what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And these, these are people, sign technical writers, signing up to write technical documentation. So I feel, obviously I've got some thoughts on this. <laughs> I think that you have to be an engineer at the same time as a documenter. Yep. You, you just, you have to have that depth. Oh, wow. I mean, or at least collaborate with an engineer, perhaps. Uh, because I'm, I'm finding that in order to explain it clearly, I, clearly I've really got to go into the code and, and do the engineering side. And it's kind of like a, the two things are tied together, I think. So uh, if we go back to the team of companies wouldn't pay for it, what I noticed that companies do like to have nice blocks. For example, I, I have recently seen some blog series on Slab on Oracle blog, I guess. So it would be great. Yeah, I guess they do it for promotion, but if they could also some condensed version contribute of that block to the documentation that would yeah. be a way. I'd be even ready to take their block, but I suspect there will be legal implications. Uh, not the Oracle one. Um, if, 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 it, if it doesn't already say, like, it's GFTL licensed or something, um, ping me, I will get it re-licensed for suitable use inside the kernel. That, 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 that's any, anything on Oracle's blog. So, for example, I. I can, I've can. i already committed to it on the mailing list, but I now actually have a task to uh, do some documentation for Reclaim, and I do plan to contribute it to uh, the kernel documentation as well, as well as a SUSE blog or something. So if you happen to write a SUSE blog, Red Hat blog, Google blog, or whatever, you can just send me a pointer because I'm not really following. I'll try to put it in the documentation, MM, or whatever. No. <laughs> I think this must be a crazy idea, but what do you think about uh, just using ChatGPT for <laughs> writing the first draft of the document? I mean, maybe there could be some license issue or some similar, some complex things. However, if we agree that having something is better than nothing, and if that could be used as just a first draft that just 
letting others to start fixing. Maybe we can do that without merging that inside the mainline, but using some kind of you know, work in progress tree. I would say to that, just try asking ChatGPT about the kernel, and you'll get your answer for why. <laughs> it probably will be harder to review what ChatGPT has written than to write your own documentation. Somebody posts on my site the results of asking ChatGPT to describe, in the style of LWN, the debate over incorporating Python into the Linux kernel. <laughs> it was very authoritative <laughs> on it, right? I mean, I, I don't see that as a way, with the current state of the tools, at least, to, to make life easier. It's a way to, at best, put in really subtle errors. And is speaking of uh, Google Summer of documentation, or Google season of documentation and the outreach, there is something that we as a community should be ready to do is to review what they have written. Uh, and to address and to uh, provide productive feedback and not usual now. Uh, so it will be some, even if there will be people who will buy into the documentation season, uh, it will be up to us to help them with that. I'm just assuming that if we ask ChatGP to produce documentation about the Linux kernel, it's going to spit Mel's book back at us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, how big uh, of a problem, like when someone sends uh, a doc uh, change patch and no reviewers, like is that a big of like? A, I mean, I, I get very few standalone documentation patches, but generally, the Randy will come in and check the text, and whoever wrote the code will hopefully take a look. But no, it happens very rarely. I, I couldn't give a general answer to that. One, one thing I noticed with the recent uh, documentation patch that went in is it was very nit, there's a lot of nitpicking going on. And it took forever for this very small bit of text to go in. And I wonder whether that's just going to make the pace glacial for, for getting anything in on docs. It's kind of the ultimate thing to bike shed as well. Yeah, doc is not code, so it, we shouldn't be so picky. And uh, it's better to have some doc instead of having no doc. And if someone has like like a, a lot of changes, maybe accept it first and then send a follow-up patch to fix those changes in the doc. It would help me greatly if um, when we have specific, very nitpicky reviewers of documentation, if we could simply tell them this documentation is good enough. That, that happened with, I believe, a memory management doc recently where, where people just had to intervene and, and shut down, that kind of stuff. We, we, there, there's a problem that I've been working on in this area. And, um, and I could use help in not being the only one telling this person to go away. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to save John the nervousness. His initials are BS, and that's a lot of what he produces. <laughs> Actually, so, so you, you mentioned Randy, Randy Dunlap. I, I wonder if we can persuade him to. Uh, by persuade, I mean pay or contract to him to actually produce some documentation because he, he writes marvelously well. So Randy does very good proofreading, but uh, he's not a memory management specialist by any means. No, but he's, he's, he's got technical chops. He understands when he's reading code what it, what it, what it means. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't... I, I would rather take uh, docs written by him than, than by almost anybody else. Mm. One of the best reviewers I've ever known was um, uh, Michael Kerisk, man pages maintainer. Oh, yeah. Often I get a new syscall, uh, everybody thought it looked great, yet yeah, ship it, and then Matthew comes in and takes a look, tore it apart, Michael. Yeah. Uh, but Michael's been quiet in recent times, unfortunately. Yeah. 
so as usual, we reach the conclusion we need more documentation, and we don't really know what to do about it. Yes. Then, like, what do you think are the highest priority areas, or is all of the above? Like, I would say that the table of contents Matthew laid out is pretty much the most important technical documentation that we have right now. So, uh, process memory management, page tables, uh, what, what, uh, Vmalloc as well, Vlad do hear us, uh, reclaim, uh, SLAB. These all are quite important to document so people would know how to work with them people would understand what is going on there, at least at, to some extent. So, so whatever we can do will be better. Uh, Priority-wise, I don't know. I usually try to write about things I do understand. So that's why I kind of wrote the half page about uh, nodes and initialization and I stopped at zones because I have no clue what's going on there. Uh, uh, but then uh, there is Liam to write about process and Suren. Uh, all, after all, we, we may work they done and there should be page cache documentation somewhere, I suppose. I mean, there's a lot of kernel doc in, in the, uh, but there's not the overriding, this is what a page cache is document. And, and that wouldn't really take me long to hammer out. It's just that I also have other code that I need to write as well as other documentation. Yeah, of course. So, you know, do you, do you want me working on folios or do you want me, do you want me writing documentation? I mean. Uh, well, that's the usual trade of, right? <laughs> and what do I do with two now, Andrew? <laughs> so uh, that's all I have. I, I think we can stop here. Uh, 